Back in the summer of 2009, this team of legendary war heroes from Naval Special Warfare Development Group, otherwise known as SEAL Team 6, went out on an extremely dangerous mission to assault a large Taliban compound located about 8,000 feet up in the central Afghanistan mountains, about two hours south of Kabul. Back in the summer of 2009, I was like 12 years old. I'm pretty sure I would have just been riding around on my bike drinking a Capri Sun at the time that these guys were assaulting a heavily fortified Taliban compound. I don't know if any of you guys remember where you were or what you would have been up to in the summer of 2009, but it's, it's just always crazy to me to think about where I was in life at the time that these crazy things were happening on the other side of the world. But the team of DevGru operators arrived on target late that night via helicopters and as the choppers were preparing to land, an Air Force drone flying overhead spotted eight hostile fighters armed with AK-47s, RPGs, PKMs, all that good stuff take off running out of the side of the compound attempting to escape the American justice that was about to head their way. But unfortunately for those eight enemy fighters, the drone overhead was equipped with an IR laser, which can only be seen through night vision, which means the enemy fighters couldn't see the laser at all, had no idea it was happening, but to the DevGru operators on the ground through their night vision, it looked like God himself was shining a spotlight on these dudes from the heavens, making it hysterically easy to follow them. So as soon as the helicopters hit the ground, Special Warfare Operator Matt Bissonette and his team took off running after the guys trying to escape while the rest of the assault force hit the main compound. And of course, thanks to the IR laser, it took no time at all for the operators to get eyes on the enemy fighters. They were heading towards a ridge line about 300 meters north of the compound. Once they got on the other side of that ridge line, the SEALs would quickly lose the line of sight of the enemy. But instead of continuing to run away, once the enemy reached the ridge line, they decided to just turn around and quickly set up a firing position. And again, the enemy had no idea about the giant IR spotlight shining from the heavens, so I guess they thought they were being real sneaky and they'd be able to set up this firing position and ambush the operators chasing them. But as you can probably guess, they definitely should have kept running because Matt Bissonette quickly shouldered his rifle and engaged the enemy as soon as he saw them turn around. He did struggle to steady his aim after sprinting such a long way in full kit, not to mention the whole team of development group guys were still getting used to the high elevation of the Afghan mountains. But despite all of that, he was still able to lock in on a fighter with a PKM machine gun and pop off multiple rounds, dropping him instantly. The rest of the operators with Bissonette then quickly opened fire dumping two more enemy fighters sending the rest running down the backside of the ridge so the operators quickly sprinted to the ridge line where they were able to spot the enemy fighters racing down the backside of the hill one of the dev gear operators noticed an rpg laying on the ground next to one of the fighters they just took out just in that short little engagement they managed to take out their two biggest guns they got the dude with the pkm and the dude with the RPG, meaning there were just a few guys with AKs left for them to worry about. So one of the DevGru operators had the brilliant idea to snatch the RPG and fire it at the dudes running down the hill. The rocket hit right next to them, peppering them with shrapnel. But unfortunately, despite their wounds from the shrapnel, the enemy fighters continued to make their way down the hill. So the operators started to make their way down the hill after them when they suddenly heard over the radio that an AC-130 gunship had just arrived overhead to provide close air support. So the team just sat tight on the ridge line and watched the AC-130's 20mm cannon pound the enemy fighters. When the gunship finished its run, the operators made their way down the ridge line accompanied by their combat assault dog they had nicknamed Hair Missile. And they began searching the area to make sure no hostile fighters had survived. During their search, the AC-130 spotted one hostile fighter as he ran into a nearby building and multiple unknown heat signatures 
operators in a nearby field. So the team split off with two operators going after the fighter in the building, while Bissonette and the rest of the team started to clear the field. The grass in the field was waist deep high, so it was the perfect hiding place for the enemy, but that didn't slow the team's hair missile down at all. The K-9 very quickly caught the scent of an enemy fighter and took off through the grass. After just a few seconds of silence, the team could hear an enemy fighter screaming and begging for mercy, so they pulled the dog back and threw a couple hand grenades in the general direction of the screams. While the rest of the team checked to make sure those grenades did the job, Bissonette continued clearing the field when suddenly he stepped on what he originally thought was just a log, but once he put pressure on it, the log gasped for air. Looking down, he immediately realized that it was not a log he was stepping on, it was actually a hostile fighter. So he jumped back and just mag dumped into this dude absolutely terrified as you would be. He then took a few seconds to gather himself and started investigating the body to make sure this dude had really been dealt with. But after further investigation, he could see that the fighter had actually already been unalived by the 20 millimeter cannon and the pressure from his foot must have just forced the air out of his lungs, making that gasping noise he heard. And at the same time that all this is happening in the field, the operators that chased the random dude into that building very quickly took him out. And with that, they had now accounted for all the missing fighters they needed to find, so it was all clear. And it's hilarious that Bissonette and his team had this whole like side quest adventure chasing these guys while the rest of the assault force is dealing with the main compound. They eliminated more than 10 hostile fighters alone and they never even entered the actual target building. But at the end of the night, it was a huge success. The assault team had completely wiped out the entire compound and suffered zero casualties. And with that guys, that's gonna be the end of the video for today. Most of the info for this story is coming from the book, No Easy Day, written by Matt Bissonette under the pen name Mark Owen. I will have a link for you dudes to buy this book down in the description, and I highly recommend it. It is fantastic, and of course, Matt Bissonette is like legit a legendary war hero, a SEAL Team 6 dev guru operator. He's been on an outrageous amount of just insanely dangerous missions and it genuinely this guy has done so much for our country it's wild he legitimately in every sense of the word is a hero so any chance that you get to support matt biss and that definitely should take it and again his book is just it's full of more stories just like the one you heard today so if you enjoyed this video you will adore his book so definitely go check it out it is genuinely a favorite of mine. But with that being said, guys, I hope you all have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button. It helps me out so much. You guys have heard me blabber on about how much YouTube hates us here like a thousand times. We just constantly get hit with strikes and freaking videos removed and just all sorts of issues. I guess it's just the nature of the content I make, but we're going to keep making it anyway. And I really appreciate all of your guys' support. None of this would be possible without you dudes. And I am so, so genuinely grateful for all of you. This is the best job in the whole world. I get to just share these incredible stories all day, every day. And I, I just couldn't imagine a better way to spend my time. It is a, it's genuinely a dream come true. So thank you all so much. Every one of you that supports me and watches the videos really means the world to me. So thank you guys. But anyway... Hope you have a great day. You know the drill. Get off your freaking phones. Go outside. Get some vitamin D. Spend some time with your family. Go work out. I still need to go work out today, so I'm talking to myself as well. But get out there. Crush this day. Spend some time reading your Bible. God is real. He loves you. He wants to have a relationship with you. This world can freaking suck sometimes, and you're not meant to go through everything alone. So Focus on reading your Bible and get that relationship with God. I promise you, your life will be 10 times better for it. But anyway, guys, enough of me blabbering on. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next